monumental thing that we're that we're about to do here today to to actually start with this project that Madam Chair and several others have been working on for a really really long time. Um, and so, Commissioner, just glad to have you here. And uh, but real quick, maybe before we get started, let me uh, just open this up with a quick word of prayer. Um, dear Father, we just thank you for this day. Uh, we just thank you for all the many blessings uh, that you've given our state, our natural resources uh, being one of those. Uh, we just ask and pray that you continue to, to bless us uh, with those natural resources, bless this committee, and, and bless the work that we do here, and be with our families while we're away. In your name we pray, amen. Commissioner, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. I appreciate all of you attending today to hear fear from us and being part of the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Program that will shape the way Georgia conserves its land for years to come. For a little backstory and reference, the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Program was born from an idea that has been around for years. This concept was introduced many times over the years in the General Assembly and then in both 2018 and 2019 legislation was passed to authorize this fund. Thanks to the citizens of this great state who approved of the idea with an 83% majority at the ballot box, the General Assembly and our governor who shares my passion for the outdoors, this program will serve as a conservation mechanism for generations to come. The law passed by the General Assembly stipulated that the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Act would go into effect on July 1, 2019, so we've been full steam ahead, full steam ahead ever since. Our inaugural application cycle ran from September 1 to October 31, 2019. This cycle yielded 58 submitted projects statewide and over $78 million in requested funding while pledging almost $120 million in matching funds. I just want to say that again, Mr. Chairman, $120 million in private match for these funds. We then reviewed these applications in accordance with the evaluation criteria that was approved by the Board of Trustees. All projects submitted by local governments, nonprofits, and state agencies had to focus on conservation or outdoor recreation and be of statewide or regional significance. DNR held a meeting of the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Program Board of the Trustees on January 21, at which the trustees approved a proposal slate of projects for funding. This was followed by a vote of approval before the full Board of Natural Resources on January 31, according to Georgia statute. Today is an exciting day that is nearly two years in the making. I want to give a heartfelt thank to, thanks to Taylor Brown, she's not with us today, but she heads it up, and Rob Stokes, who will be presenting in a minute, and the entire DNR Grants Unit for their incredible work in standing up this program alongside the trustees and the board members. I now call on Rob Stokes, the Outdoor Stewardship Program Coordinator, for a report and overview of the approved conservation projects, as well as open the floor for any questions. Be aware that uh, all, the, all of Rob's reference material, should, everybody should have one. If you don't, we can get you one. Just like everybody does. All right, Rob. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Good morning, Chairman Watson and members of the committee. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present the overview and outcome of our inaugural Georgia Outdoor Stewardship pre-application cycle. As the Commissioner said, my name is Rob Stokes and I serve as the Program Coordinator for the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Program for the Department of Natural Resources. I'd like to start by giving the committee a quick background to the program and how we got here. As you all remember, during the, 19, or the 2018 legislative session, the General Assembly passed House Bill 332, the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Act. The Outdoor Stewardship Act, or GOSA for short, provides a dedicated funding mechanism to support local parks and trails, support state parks and wildlife management areas, and protect and acquire lands critical to wildlife, clean water, and outdoor recreation across the state of Georgia. That fall, Georgia voters passed the amendment with 83% support, truly outstanding. 
In July of 2019, the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Act became effective again. During that time, the department began crafting the rules and regulations that govern the program and worked closely with partners to establish the application and evaluation criteria used to rank potential projects. During the summer of 2019, DNR staff held four educational workshops across the state to inform potential applicants of the new program and funding opportunity. We had around 200 people attend those workshops, including local and state officials and, and their employees, nonprofit representatives, and members of the general public also. We sent letters to every county commissioner, mayor, and parks director, trying to ensure that every single city and county in this state were aware of this new funding opportunity. We believe that these processes more than adequately produced a product that Georgia can be proud of and the rest of the nation can be surely envious of. This is evidenced by the robust number of submitted projects and the very narrow competitive margins between these projects. With that, I would like to offer you an overview of the cycle's significant milestones and relevant program criteria. Now, the 2019-2020 application again opened September 1st, 2019, and subsequently closed on that October 31st of the same year. Applicants were asked to complete a robust online pre-application, uh, um, answering a list of evaluation criteria and questions that were approved by the Board of Trustees. Eligible applicants included local governments, state agencies, constituted recreation authorities, and nonprofits with a core mission in conservation. Funding limits for local government projects were set at a minimum of $500,000 and a maximum of $3 million in awarded dollars. There is no minimum or maximum for state projects. To ensure that each project met the eligibility requirements set forth in the enacting legislation, we made sure that each project had a primary purpose in one of the following conservation objectives. First, projects that support local parks and trails of state and regional significance dedicated to the acquisition and or improvement of local parks, trails, and conservation lands. These applications came from cities, counties, recreation authorities, and nonprofits, again, with, with a focus on acquiring land or developing land for community parks and trail systems. The second type are those projects that support stewardship projects on state parks, wildlife management, or other state lands. The funding is dedicated for maintenance, restoration, improvement projects, enhancing permanently protected conservation land or state parks. And thirdly, are projects that promote state land acquisition, dedicated funding towards acquiring critical areas for the provision of protecting clean water, wildlife, hunting, military installation buffering, or for natural resource-based outdoor recreation. Now, our entire list of evaluation criteria would be too long to list here, um, but I'd like to cover a couple of those uh, key areas that we prioritize in our ranking, many of which were set forth in the original legislation. Number one, projects that promote hunting, fishing, and wildlife viewing. Number two, projects that improve or protect the quality or quantity of water in our state. Number three, projects with matching funds available. Number four, projects that promote economic development. And number five, projects that involve partnership between organizations and or agencies. Now the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Program also aims to prioritize projects in such a way as to uh, satisfy the public's desire for significant conservation of lands, improvements in the state outdoor recreation experience, and sustainability of Georgia's natural resources. Now one method we use to achieve this is to incent the regional significance of each project via points earned in the evaluation criteria. Now regional significance that can be um, defined and satisfied in many ways, but in simple terms, as defined by the program manual, regional significance can be achieved by serving a greater community beyond the local area, adding value to neighboring or distant communities, adding to or enhancing Georgia's statewide resources, or impacting economic growth beyond the project host community. Overall, and we received 58 applications requesting over $78 million in GOSA funding. Applications came from all over the state with a wide variety of project types. Projects were reviewed by three independent DNR staff members. Each reviewer awarded each project 
points according to the pre-application evaluation criteria, and scores were then averaged among the reviewers. In your packets, you will see the Board of Trustees proposal of approved conservation projects with accompanying distribution map of selected projects for your consideration. Um, the board selected 14 projects, totaling $19.86 million. The matching funds committed for these projects totals almost $73 million. This includes eight projects for local parks and trail systems, four projects for state stewardship, and the acquisition of two future wildlife management areas in South Georgia. The Board of Trustees approved this list of projects at their January 21st meeting. On January 31st, the Board of Natural Resources reviewed and approved the board proposal, which was transmitted to the chairman of both the House of Representatives and Senate Appropriations subcommittees that same day. Now this proposal was made solely based on the ranking of total point averages awarded to each project during the project review period. We are asking for your approval of this slate of projects today. We anticipate $20 million in funding to approve the 14 projects selected from the over 78 million in requested funds, making this cycle extremely competitive. Margins between those projects, again, were very narrow, which speaks to the quality of proposals received. Top projects in each of the three funding types were incorporated into the proposal, and by approving it as presented, we'll be able to account for the entirety of the available funds. Beyond today's business, the remainder of the 2019-2020 full cycle will progress as follows. If the project proposal is approved by the committee and the Senate committee, applicants will be invited to progress to the second level application. At this stage, entities um, shall complete the necessary high level reviews, in, uh, environmental reviews and documentation, etc. Financial meetings are slated for May and June aimed at assisting and guiding applicants through the reimbursement and fiscal responsibility processes. Project agreements are slated to be signed by the department and grantees this summer, which authorizes these entities to begin their projects. So I would also like to take this time to thank the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Board of Trustees for their direction and leadership. Georgia Department of Natural Resources leadership for their unwavering commitment to our goals the Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Coalition, who offered invaluable guidance and insight. And of course, the Georgia citizens who supported this endeavor, many of whom are participants in the current cycle. Thanks go to all. This concludes my presentation of what we believe is a very successful 2019-2020 inaugural Georgia Outdoor Stewardship Conserve Georgia pre-application cycle. Thank you, Commissioner. We'd like to take any questions. All right. I'll, uh open it up for questions here if I can uh, let's see uh, Madam Chair good morning thank you Commissioner and thank you for your presentation and I remember when this first started it was called the legacy and we went for years and years and years trying to figure out how to make it work and we finally figured that out, and y'all finally aptly applied it. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, one question that I've gotten, and you've already addressed it publicly, but if you'll just do it to reassure others who are listening, um, there was an earlier estimate that had to be lowered, and I think that you can explain that if you would, please. Yeah, uh, the, the first estimate was was based on um, they they figured in the local portion of the sales tax and the statute didn't call for that so they had to readjust it down to the to the 20 million thank you it, they were including the local portion thank you and um i'm curious just about a couple of them one um i knew that it was talk about the cabin bluff acquisition and i see that that came to fruition and what how will it be repurposed for the public now it, it, a lot of a lot of members have been to Cabin Bluff, including myself. Um, we, we're not ac acquiring the the buildings, the cabins, and the dock. We're acquiring about 7,000 acres of just raw land. Um, the uh, uh, Nature Conservancy acquired that, and they're they're allowing us to take out that piece, and then they're working with other buyers for the other piece. But uh, we're just getting the land part. So the overall objective is just to find a way to cobble together a conservation for that whole area, it sounds yeah, like? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, with well, the Nature Conservancy, I won't speak for them, with their ownership, I think any potential buyers 
they'll uh, will have to agree to some type of conservation even for that piece with the with all the cabins and the lodge on it okay thank you one more question mr chair yeah. um i'm interested in the trust for public land and the chattahoochee camp and paddle trail i know that there's an overall initiative to try to protect like a blue trail from uh, Lake Lanier all the way down to Chattahoochee Bend State Park. Is this part of, part of that project? Yes, that's part, this is a part of that, piece of that. Well, I'm glad to see it's already oh, yeah. getting it started. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Pruitt. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have about three questions, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, the first is uh, the $73 million in matching funds, that's incredible. But can you kind of break down, you don't have the exact numbers, but where that matching money comes from? Uh, we have, well, for some projects, you know, the, the, the city or county just puts it in out of their budget. Uh, some of them apply for other grants. I, I misspoke when I said private money in my initial statement. It's a mixture of monies. I, I apologize for that. Uh, as far on our projects of land acquisition, some of it's fish and wildlife grants, uh, federal money, Pittman Robinson, um, but a, a, a big portion of this is private foundations uh, that have a real interest in conservation that are throughout the state. Uh, we have several, several big partners that help us. Thank you. Um, second question is, will all these projects need the money for funding in, in this current budget year? You need 100% of this in this current budget year? I, I understand the question. Uh, I think some of these, with what they asked for, they can do the whole project. I think with Chairman Smith's example of, the, of that trail, this is a section of it. Uh, I'm looking at Rob. He knows the more specifics, <laughs> but um, some of these projects you know, they'll be completed with this, for instance, noise cut down in Camden. Um, that has, I think, an eight, seven million, seven, seven million dollar federal match to do that project. The legislature has funded the pre-project pre stuff, all the studies and engineering. Um, that's to take, um, when they used to float logs down the river, They've cut straight lines through the marsh, and that's to put the curves back in the river. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you in layman's terms, but it puts the curves back in the river so it'll back more water up on the Satilla. That's in Camden County? Yes, sir. Um, thank you. And, but I don't, I'm not sure that I got the answer, but so these projects, I know they cost a certain amount of money, but normally a lot of, not normally, a lot of times things are funded periodically and it might take two years or three years. And I'm just asking if all this money is necessary to necessarily be spent in this budget year. What, what day are we award? When we award? We will, we will be awarding this money in July. Okay. I think it does. I, I didn't know, under our current circumstances, I didn't know if we could allocate the money or budget the money, but then divide it up at the time when you need it, and it might not all be due in this fiscal year. I guess that's, that's kind of what I was trying to get to. Walter. The entities that will receive the award will have that option. Some of them will need 100% funding immediately. Some of them will, it's a reimbursement based grant. So they may trickle the money out over the next couple of years, but in, to enter into contract with them, we have to, the state has to be holding the money and have it earmarked to those projects. That makes sense. I, I appreciate that. Um, the third thing is that this, is this a new, a new park? It looks like uh, acquisition phase one and then a uh, park development which is totaling about six and a half million what is that Clayton Clayton uh, Claylon Claylon is that Claylon how you pronounce Ceylon it? is Ceylon? Uh, is is 16,000 acres uh, it's owned by the uh, the conservation fund they it, it 
Historically, some of these big groups, Nature Conservation Conservation Fund, will go in and buy something, and then DNR, we can take them out over several budget cycles or several GOSA cycles now, but uh, this is just phase one. The total cost of that land, I believe, was uh, a little north of 40 million, 16,000 acres. And so this is one we do have great private match in by uh, several foundations up here in Atlanta. But you're saying that this is phase one, but phase it's one. going to be a $40 million purchase in the end. And, and so we're actually, like you said earlier, we're committing to phase one without actually being able to commit to the balance of the $40 million over time. Is that acceptable yep, that's, to them? That's, that's true. I mean, if, we, if we, we, we expect we can get it all, but, but phase one will give us enough for a WMA. Well, I guess then, so you are actually going to have surveyed out a portion that you will sure. actually own. It won't sure. be just a down payment on the 16,000 no, no. acres. Okay, all right. And, and um, we, we, through a no-cost lease, we're actually beginning to hunt that now. So. And the park development, what does that include? I in that same see park development. Same, it's down to, um, three million dollars for park development on that same project. On Johns Creek, city of Johns Creek. Oh, okay, Johns Creek. I'll have to let Rob speak the specifics, Rob. I didn't know if that's if that's tied into the acquisition. Is that a, the park and that the same? That's a separate project, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, Had the same name, I just so I thought it was tied together. Man. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, Chairman Hatchett. I thought this was the mic that didn't work. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Commissioner, I, I, may, I came in a little late, so I, don't, I may have missed this. So how many projects actually applied? 58. Okay. That's all. I just was curious how many applied. Thank you. Chairman mm -hmm. Pergel. Uh, and thanks, Chairman. Uh, and, and Commissioner, I want to thank you for uh, the flexible nature of the uh, application process, uh, not setting just, all right, this is, this is what the match is, but you can leverage. In some of these projects, mm -hmm. you have leveraged a tremendous um, amount of, of private money. So we, we do have some other money, but, but mm -hmm. private money for these, some of these acquisitions for uh, future WMAs that... Um, that, that people are really putting a lot of money in this that, that feel strongly about this, leveraging our state dollars to a, to a, a very high degree. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that, being a good steward, not of just our resources, but of the state's revenue. Um, that, that is certainly important. And Mr. Chairman, at the appropriate time, I'd like to make a recommendation to pass on this, whenever okay. that is. All right, hold up just a minute. I got one more question. Representative Prince, you got a question? Oh yeah, thank you. And. Uh, Back to that uh, 58 projects that were some uh, applications, I guess, that were submitted. Uh, was one, or could it even qualify, the lock and dam out of the Augusta area, was that? Uh, Do you remember a lock and dam? That, Don't remember yeah. seeing an application there. Okay. That's all right. Mr. And, Chairman. And then would it qualify, I guess? Uh, we had no bad projects, but the scoring was just so tight, so once, once, if we get approval today and go to the Senate side, uh, Rob and Taylor will immediately be reaching back out to these communities. Um, they have to reapply, but their applications look good. It was just it just got so competitive uh, that uh, these are the cream of the crop for this year, and uh, so we're just so glad we're going to be able to do it again next year and the year after that and that because all the projects were good. Well, and, and thank you, Commissioner. That was kind of what I was going to go into as well is, is uh, this is just year number one uh, and, and we hope that it continues. Uh, we asked the voters of Georgia to approve this and, uh, and they did and we have a growing state and uh, we need our natural resources and we need a place for people to spend time with their families and enjoy the outdoors and just excited about the, the future of this program as, as we take these funds and protect our wildlife and our natural resources. So. Um, but at this time, we have a motion on the floor. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed? Commissioner? 
Can, can I request? A, can I request immediate transmittal to the Senate? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you do. Well, thank y'all very much. I tell you, I, 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 I just want to. I wish she was here, um, but uh, we promoted a young lady named Taylor Brown uh, from Wildlife Resources and handed her the statute. And she's a young lady, but she took this thing and created the whole process. She made a good hire with Rob too, and uh, but just got it to where we were at in 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 a, a little bit of time. And so, just want to thank her again, and uh, I'll get her all over here to meet y'all at some point. But thank you, and thank well, the committee. Thank thank you for what you do, Commissioner. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the committee being here, and uh, we're adjourned. Sorry, I was in meetings all day yesterday. I saw you text and got your message. <laughs>